Let's see if we can make a country locator map quickly in QGIS. So the first thing I will do is go to the coordinate box at the bottom and type in a world to get a world map player. If you're looking for an alternative set of country boundaries, look in the description for the video where I have linked to some. The next thing I'll do is I'll right click on this layer and I'll duplicate it. The reason I duplicate it is because the bottom layer I am going to make a grey colour. If I click on this button you'll see it's grey 93% basically. Uh, and I'll click OK and I'll drag and drop that colour to the stroke colour and click OK. The reason for doing that is that's going to be my backdrop to show the land. On the world map layer I am going to right click it and filter it and I think I will show Venezuela here. So I'll double click name equals I'll click the all button and then I can search for Venezuela. Double click it and that's the filter. I can click OK now. Now I'll double click the world map layer and I'm going to change the colours. So I'll make the fill colour, let's make it this red colour, drag and drop it and I'll leave the outline width at 0 0.26. I'll click OK. Now we've got the location of Venezuela. What else could we do here? Well, let's slightly improve it by adding a little box around it. So I'll double click the world map layer where Venezuela is. I'll go to symbology, I'll click simple fill and I will click the copy button. And you can choose any of the copied layers. I'll choose the top one. I'll change it from simple fill to geometry generator. Let's add a little box around it just to highlight it even further. I type in bounds here, open bracket, and then I'll close the bracket afterwards. I'll click OK, and we get a box around it, but it's filled in, so let's fix that. Let's go to change it to transparent fill, and let's change it to a black outline. So we've got a little box around it, which is nice. Now let's change the projection. We'll go to the bottom right, and let's choose, well, I'll type in Robinson here. And I've already used World Robinson, so it's listed there. If you've not used it before, you'll have to look in the box below. And then there is World Robinson, and I'll click OK. But what I would like to do now is I want to zoom in a bit, and I want this box around it to be a bit bigger, and also to be curved to show the curvature of the projection. So I'll double click on this, and I'll go to Geometry Generator. I've got a simple bounding box around it, so I'm going to click the Expression button, and I'm going to buffer this. And I need to put in a distance. In this case, the distance is going to be in decimal degrees. So I'll put one. And that's going to create a little bit more space around the country. You'll see what happens when I click OK and OK. So we get that box around the country. And it's OK, but it's rounded. I don't want it to be rounded. Let's fix that. I'll double click on the layer again. I'll go to Geometry Generator. Let me move this a little bit so we can see the shape, there we go. I'll click on the expression button and when you're doing a buffer there, if you look at the options on the right, I can set the number of segments and I can set the, the cap and the join style. So that's what I'll change here. So the first one, the first number there, one, that's the distance in decimal degrees. Segments is the smoothness, so let's just add one. The cap style I want to be flat. So I'll put comma and then flat in single quotes. I want it to be mitre for the join style and then I'll put single quotes in. All this does is it adds a one degree box around it and that's because our data is in decimal degrees. If your data set's in meters, you can just add a large number like 100,000 for 100 kilometers. Then this number one here represents uh, the smoothness of the corners basically. It, the higher number would be smoother and rounder. Flat means it's going to be like a square and so does mitre. So I'll click OK and apply and you can see what happens. Okay so we've got a bounding box round Venezuela. I will probably double click it again and just go to the simple fill for the red because the stroke width is quite thick. If I make that 0 0.1, 0 0.1, we'll probably see the boundaries 
and the borders of Venezuela a little bit more clearly. Okay, so that's good. The last thing, I want the box to be more accurate in relation to how it follows the curvature of the Earth. So we can do that quite easily. I'll click on the expression button again, and now I'm gonna use Densify. So I'll start typing Dense, and then I get Densify by count. So I'll double click it, and it goes before the existing expression. After the last bracket, I'll click comma, and then I'll type a 100. And what, and then I, and then I close the bracket. What this does is it adds 100 intermediate vertices to each side of the square. So it's gonna be able to draw it as if it's curved. So let's look at that. Click OK and apply. And OK again. Now you can see a nice subtle little curve. And if I was to, for example, change the projection again in the bottom right, let's change it to Winkle Triple, which is one used by National Geographic Society. I've used it recently, so it's listed here, but if you haven't, you'll see it below and you can select it and click OK. So you can see this is now curvy. If I click again, there's a projection called World From Space. So there we go. I've used it recently, so it's listed there, but you'll find it down below if you haven't used it before. Click OK. And uh, in this case, it's probably not a great choice because it's uh, a bit off center. So let's change it back to Robinson. Click OK. And I can zoom in a bit. If I want to change things now, let me move, let me move over Venezuela over here. If I double click it, we can see that in the geometry generator, if I change the first number one, that's one degree. So if I change that to two, it'll make the box bigger. If I change this value one to zero, it doesn't do anything. But if I change it to 10, it's not going to do anything because I'm using a flat cap style and a mitre. And that means the square, the, the, the buffer has got a square shape to it. So don't worry about the second number. 100 here is how many intermediate vertices there are. So if you change it to zero and click apply, it'll go back to straight. If I change it to 10, it'll be more curved and 100 will probably make it the smoothest. Okay. So now we've got that, that's great. And we could really easily click on the little filter icon here and change the country. To do that, you can just type in country names, but it's easy to get it wrong. So I would usually hit name. I would usually tick use unfiltered layer and then hit all. If you don't tick use unfiltered layer, when you hit all, it's only gonna list Venezuela. So let's type in South and we'll try and find South Korea. And we'll replace Venezuela with South Korea by double clicking on South Korea and then hitting test. Okay. Okay, now in this case, if I want to change this CRS, I'll click the bottom right and I'll type in Asia there and I'll use a Asia centric projection. I'll choose one I've already used, it's WGS. 84 equal Earth, Asia, Pacific. I'll click apply and OK. And I will zoom in here. I'll zoom out a bit more. There we go. And probably the last thing I'll do is I'll double click on the symbology for the country layer. I'll go to labels. I will choose single label and I will make sure it says name. I'll click on the expression button because I want to type upper and an open bracket before it close the bracket and that's going to make it upper, uppercase text. I will also in the text section change it to bold size 14. Let me hit apply. Okay so the label's over the country which is not what I want so let's change it to call outs. Tick the box. If you don't see call outs you'll just need to update your QGIS version but these have been available for a couple of years now. I'll choose Manhattan lines I click apply, nothing will happen, don't worry about that. I need to go to placement, make the distance say 20. Okay, we're almost there. I don't want the line, I don't want the little leader line going straight to the middle of the country. So if I go to call outs, I can change the feature anchor point from pole of inaccessibility, which is essentially the center of the country, to point on exterior. And I want to offset that from the feature by say 1.5. 
That means a little line that points to the country will be just off the coast. It's a bit too far there. Probably change it to one. Okay. Point five. Okay, it's pointing to an island, but don't worry about that. We can shift and label. I'll click OK. I'm going to use the Move Label button, and I'm going to shift the label. I'll click OK at this point. I'll shift the label. Let me put it here. Maybe down here. Okay, so you see how that works. Now, if I was to change the country, click the filter again. Let's change it to... Madagascar. Click OK. R I can double right click the layer to zoom to Madagascar. Let me zoom out. So I'll probably want a different global projection here. So I'll click the button one more time at the bottom right. And here I will choose one I used previously, Winkle Triple. Click OK. And I can zoom in a little bit more. And then we have a map which shows the location of Madagascar. It's got a bounding box around it and it's got a little label. You saw in the case of South Korea, sometimes the label will point to an outline island or something like that. But this is a really useful way to quickly generate global locator maps. And then if you want to save this as a high quality image, you can just go to project, import, export, and then export map to image, PNG, JPEG, whatever you like, or even a PDF.